Hi koalas! We are going to read chapter 3 of Ghost Town at Sundown today. Chapter 3 is called Player Piano. Outside, the sad tune played on. It's coming from there, said Annie. She crept toward a building that had had a sign with the word hotel on it. Jack limped after her. Annie slowly pushed open a swinging door. They peeked inside. The fading daylight lit a piano in the corner of the room. The keys were moving up and down, but no one was there. Yikes, whispered Annie. A ghost playing the piano? Suddenly, the keys were still the keys were still and the air got very cold. No, no way, said Jack. There's no such thing as a ghost. We saw one in ancient Egypt, whispered Annie. Yeah, but that was ancient Egypt, said Jack. Even so, his heart raced. I'll look up. I'll look it up. Jack pulled out the Wild West book. He found a picture of a piano, and he read aloud. Player pianos were popular in, old, in the Old West. The piano played automatically when someone pumped its floor pedals. Later, with the help of electricity, the piano played all by itself. Woo! Jack closed the book. I knew there was an answer, he said. It must be electric, and somehow it came on. I didn't know they had electricity in the Wild West, said Annie. They didn't, said Jack. He looked at Annie. Oh, man, let's get out of here, he said. And there's the playing piano. Jack and Annie backed out of the hotel. When they got outside, they heard another sound, horse hooves thumping against the hard ground. A cloud of dust seemed to be moving toward the town. As it got closer, Jack saw three riders. They were herding a small band of horses. Hide, Jack said. Where, said Annie. Jack looked around wildly. He saw two barrels outside the hotel. There, he said. Jack and Annie hurried to the empty barrels. Jack climbed inside one and tried to scrunch down. His hat wouldn't fit. He jumped out of the barrel and threw his hat into the hotel. Mine too, said Annie. Jack grabbed hers and threw it. Then he scrambled back into the barrel, just in time. Jack heard the horses th thunder into town. He peeked through a crack into the barrel and saw a blur of cowboys and horses go by. Whoa, 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 men shouted. Jack heard the horses come to a halt. They stamped and snorted, and all he could see were shadows through the crack. Dust covered Jack. He had to sneeze. He pinched his nose. The creek bed must have dried up, a cowboy yelled. This town's a ghost. Yup, it gives me the shivers, said another. Let's camp over the rise. Jack really had to sneeze. He pinched his nose even tighter, but he couldn't stop the sneeze. He let out a choked, achoo! What was that, someone said. Just then, a loud whiny split. A loud whiny split in the air. Just then, a loud whiny split the air. Jack saw a beautiful horse rear up. They had no rider or saddle, just a rope around their neck. She was as red as sunset. She was a wild. She had a wild black mane with white star with a white star above her eyes. He kept fighting this. He can't keep fighting this one, boss. A cowboy yelled. Yep, she wants her colt. Another said. We should have left them behind. Here's the horse with a star on its forehead. I wonder if that horse is special. He was too slow, a growly voice said. We'll sell her, and then we'll cross the border. That's terrible, thought Jack. He knew Annie must be upset, too. He just hoped that she wouldn't jump out of her barrel. But the cowboys pulled the red horse away. The, cr the ground rang from the pounding of hooves as they galloped off. Jack and Annie stood up. They watched the riders disappear into the dust. The pounding faded away. All was quiet again, except for the lazy buzzing of flies. They were mean to that horse, Annie said in a low, angry voice. I know, but there was nothing we could do, said Jack. His boots were killing him. He climbed out of his barrel. Man, I have to get these off, he said. Jack sat down on the porch of the hotel. He grabbed the foot of one boot and pulled. Jack, said Annie, I think there is something we can do. What? Jack looked up. A small horse was running down the road. 
He was as red as the wild mother horse. He had the same black mane and white star above his eyes. A rope was around his neck. He looked very lost. Chapter 4 is called Hands Up. It's the colt, said Annie. He's looking for his mother. She ran toward the wild-eyed little horse. Wait, called Jack. Oh, brother. He pulled the book out of his pack. We found a chapter titled Horses of the Wild West. He started to read. At the end of the 1800s, over a million wild horses, called Mustangs, wandered the West. These tough, fast horses were descendants of runaway Spanish horses. Mustang herders captured them and sold them to ranchers. Breaking a wild Mustang took great skill. Jack turned the page. There was a picture of a herd of horses. Two of them even looked like the beautiful mare in her colt. A mare is a mom horse and a colt is a baby horse. Hey, Annie, Jack called. You should see this picture. Annie didn't answer. Jack looked up. Annie was trying to get close to the young Mustang, but he kept darting away. Watch it. He's wild, said Jack. Annie was speaking softly to the colt. She slowly reached out and grabbed the end of the rope. Still talking to him, she led him Still talking to him, she led him to a broad wooden post. Stop, don't do anything, said Jack. He flipped the pages of the book. He found a section called How to Treat a Horse. The basic rules on how to treat a horse are simple. A soft hand, a firm voice, a sunny attitude, praise, and reward. I've got the rules, shouted Jack. Don't do anything before I write them down. Jack pulled out his notebook and pencil. He wrote, Horse rules. One, soft hand. Two, firm voice. Three, sunny attitude. Four, praise. Five, reward. Okay, listen. Jack looked up, but Annie was already sitting on the colt's back. Jack froze. He held his breath. The mustang whined and pawed the ground. He snorted and he tossed his head. Annie kept patting his neck and talking softly. Finally, the young horse grew still. Annie smiled at Jack. I named him Sunset, she said. Jack let out his breath. Let's go, said Annie. We have to take him to his mom. Are you nuts, said Jack? We have to solve our riddle. It'll be dark soon, and those guys were really bad guys. I could just tell. We don't have a choice, said Annie. Oh, brother. Jack knew she wouldn't change her mind. Let's see what the book says. He read more about Mustangs. Wild Mustangs live together in families. The bond between a mare and her young is very strong. His sounds of distress or hunger will always bring her to him. A Mustang cannot bear to wander alone. Jack groaned and he looked at Sunset. The young Mustang did have a sad look in his eyes. Okay, we'll make a plan, he said, but first I have to get out of these boots. Jack grabbed one of the boots and pulled. Hurry, said Annie. I can't even think in these things, said Jack. He huffed and he puffed and he pulled, then a deep voice stopped him cold. Hands up or I'll shoot. Jack let go of his boot. He raised his hands in the air. So did Annie. The cowboy rode out of an alley. His face was bony and tan, and he was riding a gray horse and pointing a six-shooter. I reckon you're the smallest horse thieves I've ever come across, he said. And the next chapter is called Slim. Thanks for reading with me.